an English-based theme to uh, some of your uh, new caps. Tell us first about the, uh, the guys in the three quarters, Lewis, Three Summit and uh, Nick Tompkins. Yeah, obviously two very young players, um, both uh, playing very well in the English Premiership, um, both Welsh qualified, um, and an opportunity for those guys to come into the squad um, and uh, prove what they can do in and around the blokes that have been there for some time. Um, I think the balance of the team looks uh, very, very exciting from our point of view. Uh, a lot of the World Cup squad there, a lot of last year's team that won the championship, so a lot of experience and youth um, with an eye to 2023. Bruce Summit certainly on the youth side of it. Uh, what have you made of his uh, attributes for Gloucester? Yeah, I'm always a great believer. If you're if you're good enough, you're old enough, and he's showing signs that you know he's um, he's maturing as a rugby player at a very young age. He's he's got gas, which you know at the top level of the game you can't beat, and uh, he's a great finisher. Uh, he's not the finished product, as, as he knows and we know, um, but it'd be great to get him in the environment and, and start to work with him, and we believe he's got a big future in the game. And how do you see Nick Tompkins fitting into that uh, competition for the centre position, which is, I suppose, fair to say a bit of a headache, uh, given unavailability? Yeah, there's been a few injuries. Obviously, uh, Jonathan Davies has been a mainstay of the team for many, many years and is a world-class player, so you don't replace players like that overnight. So it's, it's something we've looked long and hard at. Um, the, the coaches have been out and about doing a lot of uh, miles and, and looking at, at other players outside of, not just Wales, but outside and, and uh, the conversations we've had with, with Nick and, uh, and people at Saracens uh, have all been very impressive, to be honest. Up front, Will Rowlands, I think, was a bit of a, uh, a shock for most of us on this side of the microphone. Uh, tell us about him. Yeah, I've been watching him since 2015. Um, which is it's not a shock to me. Um, Stephen Jones came from Wasps in Newham. He said there's a, a young rugby player there that's very big. He's athletic. Uh, he's an intelligent rugby player. Uh, Cambridge University graduate, I think, um, and is Welsh qualified. So in my role at the Scarlets, twice we've tried to get him there and been unsuccessful. So um, at, at first opportunity here, we've, we've, we've um, had a look at him. We've spoken to him. Uh, I've met him a couple of times. Uh, and uh, he's very, very much looking forward to an opportunity to uh, hopefully play for Wales in the future. And, uh, you know, he, he fits the profile of the second row we're looking for. Um, we did a lot of homework on the Rugby World Cup that's just been. We looked at the All Blacks, South Africa, England, the, the sorts of type forwards that they have and how successful they've been. And, and we think um, he fits the profile of the second row we're looking for. He's big, he's athletic, and he's an intelligent rugby player. And Will Griff John back in the Welsh fold after... Playing at under 20s? Yeah, he's had, a, he's had a journey, hasn't he, where he's gone from being a young loose forward, converted to the front row. He's a big man, powerful man. Um, it's taken him a number of years to learn his craft, and I think at uh, 26, just turned 27 in December. You know, he's uh, just coming close towards his prime, really, and, uh, and I know the work that Humph will do, John Humphreys will do with him. Um, hopefully we're going to see a very, very good scrummaging uh, big man that can, uh, can play the game. Uh, you know, and um, the injury to Thomas Francis, obviously, that uh, has meant we've had to look further afield. And um, obviously, we've got some players in Wales and, and Samson Lee, who we know a lot about. So it's an opportunity to see what Will can offer. And how do you see uh, Rhys Webb's challenge against the guys who have been in that uh, scrim half shirt? Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough on Allard. Um, I had a chat to Allard yesterday. Uh, we all have worked with Allard before and we know what he can and can't do. So it's an opportunity for a guy like Reese, who's played at the top level of the game, uh, very experienced player to come in, uh, for us to have a, a closer look at, at, at Reese and Camp. Um, and the other two that are there are obviously playing very, very well. So we're very blessed in nines, to be honest. Any players in that squad who won't be available or you worry might not be available against Italy? Owen Mockin or anyone else? Yeah, there's a couple of players that are um, uh, recovering from injury. Um, but we've select the ones we have selected, uh, we believe will be available from, from round two onwards. Uh, obviously some players like Reese Patchell who have picked up injuries um, that won't be available later on in the competition so we'll just keep monitoring those guys as well. And how high should Welsh expectations be for this tournament given that you are defending Grand Slam champions but also given it's a, a change of guard and the start of a new era and, and so on, uh, how high should expectations be this year? Yeah, we've had a chat about that as a group. Um, Last year's group won the, won the championship, um, so we weren't part of that apart from Neil Jenkins. 
Uh, so really what we're doing is uh, going in with a view of uh, it's ours to win. Like every other team, we're going there to try to win the competition. Um, we know it won't be easy, it'll be a big challenge, but one that we're thoroughly looking forward to. Is Italy first up a good fixture, one that you're expected to win, or a potential banana skin? Well, we look at it that um, the draw that we've got um, is there, it's in place. Italy, for us, uh, as a new group coming in, uh, is probably a very good fixture to have first up. You know, they've got a new coach coming in, so things are on an even keel there, really, and uh, it's an opportunity for us to to uh, hopefully um, put on a good performance, which is what it's all about. Uh, really, regardless of the opposition first up at home, it's about the performance we put out. When you talked about your emotions in the first game against the Barbars, talk to me about how you're feeling about your first six nations and where you, where you rate the competition. Uh, the competition's right up there as, as far as I'm concerned outside of the Rugby World Cup the best competition in the world it's, it's got the history uh, you know you've got your fans just across the border from each other and, and so you get that sort of 60-40 70-30 crowd um, so it's always going to be um, you know a, a great environment to play rugby in. and uh, from a coaching point of view for me it's, uh, it's an honour and a privilege to be a part of it and it's something that I'm really really looking forward to um, I've been looking forward to it for some time now and it's just around the corner so it's exciting times was there anything you learned from the Barbar bar matches that you thought you may change or do differently coming to the Six Nations? No, that, that game was in isolation really. It was a great opportunity for us as a group to come together, uh, management team coming together. You know, a lot of our, our guys have been together sort of 8 to 12 years and for new coaches coming in, there was it was a good betting in period. Um, it was great to meet a lot of the players that we've, we've coached against but haven't actually worked with, so to get to know them a bit better and, and put in some of the building blocks for the Six Nations. So very, very valuable exercise in hindsight and uh, one we're grateful for. Wayne, well, in the past, one thing that's emerged is sometimes when there's been a lot of English-based players in the squad, there's been some issues in terms of the availability of some squad sessions, perhaps, and then returning to the clubs in the final week. I think you've gone for nine English-based players. Was that something you had to think about in looking at the overall balance and mix of the squad, the availability throughout the campaign? Well, it's something you're aware of, but certainly, no, we, we've looked at... Um, selecting a squad that we think uh, has an eye on obviously getting a job done in this campaign week by week but also with an eye to 2023 so it, it's really about what's going to service those needs and we think this group does that obviously in some positions um, hands been forced a little bit with injury um, but you know that that's just an opportunity for other players and for us to to build the the player pool you know we don't have the the biggest uh, number of uh, players uh, in world rugby to select from as a nation so for us, you know, looking within the rules, which is what we've done, um, we think we've come up with a, a reasonably balanced team. Wayne, in terms of uh, Tompkins, uh, how did you find out in the Welsh Quarter like that? You know? um, well, I took notice of him first when he carved us up as a youngster at about 20 years of age in a, um, in a uh, Champions Cup match uh, against Saracens, and uh, I found out that he was uh, grandparent um, eligible. Uh, and uh, I've been watching his career ever since, to be quite honest, um, and he's gone very, very well. So, you know, we've had a lot of contact with him uh, in recent times, and uh, look, he's a guy that's uh, a young fellow that's come through. He's feeling really, really confident in his game at the moment. He's in a fantastic club uh, with some great players around him, so he's learned a lot in a short space of time. I think he's uh, more mature than his, than his age. When you speak to him, certainly you can have a fantastic rugby conversation. So I think there is a, an excellent young rug, rugby player there. And when you look at our centres and you look forward to the next World Cup, he fits the profile we're looking for to, to get the balance right in that midfield area. Um, you know, and what can we got another young guy? So I, I think the future is looking pretty bright. And obviously we've got the experience around those two players. He's played under 20s for England and Saxons. Are you surprised he hasn't had a senior cap at this point? Oh, look, there's a bigger player pool in England, isn't there? Um, they've got a lot of uh, quality players to select from, um, and they'll have their own plan they're working towards. But for us, you know, he's a quality player. Uh, he's a young player. He's got good experience uh, uh, behind him now. And we think uh, he's ready to go at this level of the game. Was he quite willing to switch allegiances? Uh, look, from his point of view, he's always known that he's had the ability to go either way. Um, he's been living in, in uh, that part of the world, and he's gone through the age group program there. Uh, but in terms of committing to a national team. He's made that commitment now and we're very pleased that he has. And just re on a similar um, level, Eddie Jones was reportedly interested in him. Did that kind of accelerate your, your, your picking of him, if you like? 
not at all. You just got to check his uh, his uh, social media page. There's a big Welsh flag there. I think he's uh, well and truly Welsh. And um, I, I think uh, having spoken to him, he's uh, he's just over the moon. He loves playing rugby. He's at that age where it's just about playing. It's not about contracts. It's not about anything else. He, he just wants to play the game. He's enjoying his rugby and um, he's Welsh through and through. Do you see Lewis Rees Salmond as a starter or is he there to get experience, get the taste of the well, at 18, we need to get him in and, and learn as much as we can. But what we've seen um, indicates to us that he's going to be a very, very good player going forward. Um, all the coaches know that he's, he's got um, some raw talent that you know you can't coach. You can't coach the sort of speed he's got and the, the finishing ability. He's um, And he's got uh, a lot of growth in him, which is the exciting part at 18 years of age, turning 19. So look, he's a big guy. He's fast. He, he's got great attributes. So we'll learn a lot more by having him in camp with us. In terms of somebody like Sam Davis, who's play, playing regularly in form for the ground, what's been the message to him missing out to a player such as Owen Williams based outside? And then the similar situation with Scott Williams who's playing in Wales and Samson the English based player. What's, what's the general message to these people? Yeah, I made about nine phone calls last night, uh, another one this morning, and spoke to um, the individuals concerned. and. It's, it's a clear message really, um, what we're looking for, um, the areas of their game that need to be working on uh, and the fact that it's, the finish line hasn't, hasn't approached for any of them. You know, there's, uh, 2023 is what we're working towards and obviously we've got this campaign to deal with right now which is the focus so um, the fact that they haven't been named doesn't mean that they won't get game time in this competition because as we know there'll be injuries, uh, these things happen so it's about working hard at their game in the areas that the coaches have, have asked them to and uh, making sure that you know they put their best foot forward and put their hand up for selection going forward. We're done for the live part, that's brilliant everyone, thank you very much.